online service platforms appear to be testing the loyalty of their subscribers with substantial hikes in monthly membership fees. So what are the latest statistics telling us about streamflation here in Korea? What are pundits saying about Coupang's decision to raise its subscription fees by over 50%? And what are the broader implications of these hikes? Welcome to Issues and Insiders for this Tuesday, April 23rd here in Korea. I'm Min Sun Hee. Korean e-commerce giant Coupon recently raised its WOW monthly membership fee by almost 60% to 7,891, about 5 US dollars and 80 cents. For more on the reasons and the repercussions of this move, I have Professor Kim Yong-jin at Seogang University live on the line. Professor Kim, it's good to have you on. Good afternoon. I also have Konsoa with us. Well, welcome back. Hello, Sonny. So we'll start here. Let's begin with the statistics, Soa, that prove streamflation is here in Korea. Right. So, well, first off, for starters, streamflation is referring to the rising costs of streaming services that used to be praised for their affordability and for being superior alternatives to traditional TV. Now, more and more platforms are turning to higher rates, so while customers are obviously not happy about it, despite streaming companies' promises of upgraded benefits. Most recently, a super hike has been making headlines as the country Country's top e-commerce company Coupang announced a 58% increase of its monthly WOW membership fee, which includes video streaming and delivery services. And this isn't the only platform that has recently raised or announced an increase in its subscription fees. Let's take a look at major platforms that have streaming services and are widely used in Korea. Google in December raised the monthly subscription price for YouTube Premium, a paid membership that includes access to ad-free YouTube videos from 10,451 to 14,901 or around $7.6 to $10.8 per month. And that's a 42.5% increase. The price for Korea's coupons WOW membership, still cheaper than others, soared from 4,991 to 7,891 or some 3.6 to 5.7 dollars, again by 58 percent. World's number one OTT platform Netflix restricted new signups for its standard membership priced at 9,501 or roughly $7 in December. Now the cheapest option now is 13,501 or close to $10. Disney Plus and local streaming platform Teeving also raised fees by 40 and 20 percent respectively. Right, I see. And all that being said, Professor Kim, how do you explain Coupang's decision to substantially raise its RocketWow subscri subscription fee, that is? Well, you know, uh, so I, you explained very well, you know, it looks like substantial because it was uh, the price, you know, membership price of Coupang was quite low. But anyway, you know, Coupang you know, has decided to raise the price of its WOW paid membership service, you know, uh, to 7,008. 191 is uh, is about 5.74 dollars per month you know, from the uh, current uh, 4991 which is about you know 58% increase like you mentioned according to the company uh, the reason of the price hike is to continue to expand its you know exclusive benefit for wow uh, members such as free shipping free returns unlimited ott service and free food uh, delivery uh, new subscribers will uh, require to pay the increased price from this coming Saturday, and the price hike will also be applied to existing uh, users from uh, their August payment. Um, this move of the company can be interpreted as an attempt to secure profitability in uh, preparation for the uh, penetration of Chinese e-commerce companies like uh, uh, AliExpress and uh, Temu uh, um, in the Korean market. Uh, to compete with these Chinese competitors, uh, Coupang need to keep investing in expanding its logistics infrastructure and advancing its technologies and uh, nationwide delivery network. So they need more money to invest in. I think, you know, uh, this might be um, correct analysis about their price hike.
Right, indeed. Professor Kim, Coupon's latest price hike, it's also triggered renewed interest mm. in the lock-in business model. For the sake of our viewers who may not be familiar with this term, could you tell us a bit about this business model? Well, yeah, the lock-in business model is quite common uh, nowadays, right? Um, the term lock-in business model you know, comes from lock-in effect in theory, which exists you know, when a customer is so strongly tied to a company um, that switching is only possible with you know, a considerable effort and expense. That means a customer cannot run away from using the service or buying product of a company. Uh, in the B2B environment, uh, this can happen um, through you know, strong integration of the provider into the customer's processes. In the B2C business, like you know what we do in, on e-commerce, right? Uh, this can uh, happen when a company provide a compelling set of benefit um, to uh, customers, and customers cannot find a better alternative to the service. Think about you know the case of Microsoft Office. You know most people I know use it, and I heavily use it. If I'm not using it, there's not much alternative uh, to use. Um, I use it more. I learn about it more, and thus I use it more. This is a kind of virtuous cycle heading toward lock-in. Uh, in particular, as the subscription business model like Coupang, Market Collie, Amazon, Netflix is you know, really getting uh, popular, the building a uh, compelling set of benefits into a subscription offering um, is, it becomes very easy. And um, so this kind of, you know, uh, bundling uh, itself make customers, you know, uh, very easy uh, for their lives. And then so that, you know, they have to stay with these companies in a long period of time, uh, which in turn contribute to the company's bottom line very positively. You're right, I see. By keeping these customers locked into their ecosystem of essential commodities and entertainment then. Right. Meanwhile, so I hear efforts to encourage food delivery by doing away with delivery fees are actually backfiring. Could you tell us a bit more about this? Right, Sunny. Amid fierce competition among food delivery platforms, uh, major local operators are trying to increase their market share by launching these free delivery services. Now, in the past weeks, Kupang Eats, Pedal Minjok, or Pemin in short, and Yogi Yo all rolled out membership based free delivery services in the order I just mentioned. So Pemin and Yogio were quick to respond to Kupang Eats' decision. The ones who are not fond of this kind of service are restaurant owners. Uh, over fears of increased commission fees on orders placed through these delivery platforms. Now, one food that's in particular popular among customers here using delivery apps is chicken. And uh, chicken restaurant owners rolled up their sleeves to voice their frustration against the delivery platform's unilateral abrupt free delivery campaigns, as they say. Restaurant owners of five major chicken brands across the nation released a statement last last week targeted at delivery app companies in which they said no matter how much they sell they have trouble paying for labor costs due to the commission charges now exacerbated by delivery cost burdens they claimed uh, if a chicken costs some 20,000 won some 6,000 won go into commission and delivery costs saying if this goes on they might have to raise the price for one chicken to 30,000 or 40,000 won in the future which then would burden in the consumers. With that, they warned to boycott the delivery apps if they don't do something to improve the situation. And speaking of consumers, they as well seem to have some complaints when it comes to free delivery services. For one, it doesn't seem to be free for everyone. In the case of Coupang Eats, only those WOW members were subject to the free service for delivery. And for others, it appears to be strenuous to download coupons to be able to receive free delivery. That was the case for payment users. And in some cases, the availability of the service varied widely depending on where you are ordering from. And that was the case for users of Yogio. Right, I see. Meanwhile, back on streamflation, Professor Kim, what look to be the broader implications of streaming services expenses on household budgets, do you think? 
Before I answer, you know, that question, I, I want to add one thing, you know, to uh, SOAS, you know, explanation about delivery service. These companies might have to uh, use a subscription business model too. <laughs> they'll, they'll be, they'll, you know, um, probably solve the problem of uh, delivery service fees. Anyway, uh, so uh, let me, you know, first tell you uh, the simple stats about the streaming service in the United States, right? Uh, 38 0.1% of all TV usage is dedicated to streaming. And there are approximately 1.8 billion subscriptions to uh, video screening services. And 28, 26% uh, of viewers admit to uh, binge watching at least once a week. Netflix has well over 200 million subscribers worldwide. Uh, Ted Lasso was the most streamed program of two, uh, two, 20, uh, 23, about they have uh, 16.9 billion um, minutes. Wow, that's great. And according to a survey conducted in June 2023 in South Korea on uh, uh, over the top OTT video streaming service, uh, subscriptions roughly 30 36.5% uh, of respondents answered that they were subscribed to just one service at, at a time. However, another 31% stated to be using three or more subscription services at a time. And then the OTT um, business has been growing about 6.5% uh, every year. And in 2023, South Koreans subscribe 2.7 uh, OTT services on average, and uh, the average amount of payment for all age group from 20 years upward was about 12,000 Korean won per month, uh, which means you know now the service fee uh, becomes in you know, a kind of burden to household. Right, indeed. And speaking about burdens, so in response to Coupang's monthly membership price hike, I believe its competitors are going all out to lure customers who may choose to leave Coupang because of this burden. They are uh, amid growing consumer backlash over Coupang's sudden hike of its WOW membership fee, which, hasn't result, which has resulted in a number of customers actually contemplating over whether they should terminate uh, their membership. Uh, E-commerce rivals such as Naver and Shinsege are now trying to take advantage of this situation by bolstering their own membership benefits or launching promotions. Korea's leading internet portal operator Naver, which also has its online online commerce business announced last week to offer free delivery benefits to Naver Plus membership users for three months and three months of free subscription for new members. Naver Plus users receive discounts when shopping or making reservations through Naver. G Market and Auction, e commerce platforms under Shinsege Group that used to have a bigger market share in the past but currently lag behind Coupang, will reduce annual fees for the Shinsege Universe Club membership in May from 30,000 won, roughly 22 US dollars, to 4,900 won, just $3.5. And this coincides with G Market's Big Smile Day, the platform's biggest first half sales event in May. The Shinsege Universe Club offers benefits and discounts for six most used Shinsege affiliates, eMart, Shinsege Department Store, Shinsege Duty Free, SSG.com, G Market and Starbucks. Uh, nevertheless, pundits doubt these marketing strategies are enough to steal customers away from the number one e-commerce uh, coupon uh, to the extent that coupon will actually be threatened to remain on top. Right, and then staying with that then, Professor Kim, what are your personal thoughts regarding the hikes in membership fees by online platform services? Well, you know, there are two conflicting uh, perspectives um, from a uh, business scholar and from a customer. So uh, let's say, you know, from a business scholar perspective, um, I think it is, it is really good stretching move for uh, Coupon. Now, the decision of substantial increase in the Rocket Wow subscription fee may send a good signal of margin management to the market. So uh, their stock price will uh, go up. Um, this fee adjustment is as estimated by a market expert um, to contribute about 400 million annually. 
and will make up increased losses from new initiatives in Taiwan and Kupang East and Fartec. Moreover, Kupang has additional leeway to uh, raise subscription fees uh, in the long term because, you know, uh, so I already you know, talked, um, they charge a lower price than competitors like Amazon Prime. Um, Kupang has built a strong lock-in business model, you know, which with various uh, benefit will mitigate potential customer pushback, um, you know, from price hike. Um, with the extra money, they can also invest in logistic infrastructure, you know, further to compete with Chinese, you know, competitors. So their, their sustainability will, you know, uh, grow in the future. But as a customer, I believe, you know, no, no consumer like, you know, price hike of this way, right? But, you know, for a while, um, this might be some, uh, there might be some resistance from, you know, customers, but, you know, I don't think that will last long as long as, you know, uh, Coupang provide you know, good services, um, you know, just like five services they provide now and more content. Right. So, Professor Kim, do you suppose the customers will stay with Coupang, perhaps because of the, they're locked into the ecosystem of the services provided by Coupang then? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, think about the value customers might have now, you know, uh, as Coupang um, argued that customers, the members, may have about one uh, million won, uh, one million Korean won a benefit uh, from their five services, like a free delivery, food, uh, free returns, and free OTT, and uh, free food deliveries, compared to non-members. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, think about the price, you know, uh, Amazon and other platforms charges. So, you know, uh, I think, you know, even though people have some complaint at the moment, uh, they will um, they're compromised. Really. Right, indeed. And so I also understand the streamflation. It's not just a national phenomenon here. It's also a global reality. Do tell us more. It is. Uh, I think we touched upon this when we talked about domestic and uh, global OTT services a few months ago. I believe it was December last year. Uh, how people? We also mentioned how people actually turn to alternative streaming platforms like Fast, uh, which stands for Free Advertising Supported Streaming Television, for instance, and that all because of the impacts of streamflation. So there has been a clear trend of streamflation on the global scale with data suggesting an average price increase of 25 percent in leading streaming services in 2023. This hike primarily associated with rising content production costs and growing competition. The trend started with Netflix which was among the list I showed you earlier of major platforms used in Korea too. It has been raising its prices in the past years to the extent that its most expensive subscription version costs $23. This latest decision, part of an increase in premium subscription plans in the U.S., U.K. and France last October. After the golden years for video streaming platforms during the stay-at-home era or during COVID-19 pandemic, losses of subscribers made the world's leading OTT take action in the form of password sharing crackdowns and price hikes. Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus, Paramount Plus, Peacock, all the major players followed suit. The streamflation phenomenon, however, does not seem to be scaring away consumers as spending on streaming services in January this year soared more than 70 percent when we compared from 2021. Right, then keeping in mind the popularity of streaming services and our growing dependence on these online services, Professor Kim, the Fair Trade Commission here has reaffirmed its intentions to push for the so-called online platform law. Could you tell us a bit about this legal initiative and the response to its potential introduction? Well, um, you know, there are a lot of people complain about the platform services, you know, when uh, they are locked in, right? They're, they're, because they don't have much choices, you know, uh, of using uh, other services. So, uh, as you mentioned, the Korea Fair Trade Commission, what is called KFTC, um, reaffirmed its in, uh, intention to introduce the act on promotion of uh, platform competition, um, what is called the Digital uh, Regulation Bill that follows President Yoon Suk-yeol's earlier introduction 
to prepare measures to reduce the harm caused by um, monopoly of large platforms. This is the key part, right? Uh, it would you know, prevent targeted platforms such as Google uh, from malpractices such as favoring their own services on a platform, requiring end users to use their browser identification or sometimes payment services, and restricting multi-homing and uh, platforms access to and transfer of data so, you know, we say, you know, uh, data is mine. Why you have data and why you transfer your data, my data, you know, to your countries, you know, on your own. So the uh, proposed act follows a uh, 2022 amendment um, to, to create telecommunication business act to prevent the large platforms, especially like Apple, Google, from forcing developers to use their in-app payment system. Probably everyone knows, you know, this, this was very, you know, uh, a famous case. And it can be seen as doing Korean small businesses a favor, but it probably undercut U.S. business interest in Korea, Korea's, you know, large and booming digital market. Uh, it, it targets online platforms with average market capitaliz capitalization of at least Korean won, like a three 30 trillion uh, Korean won, I mean, US uh, $23 billion. Average annual uh, revenue from uh, platform services of at least uh, 3 trillion Korean won and uh, US $2.3 $2 billion. And with at least 10 million average monthly users or at least 50,000 average monthly business users, meaning that um, the likely, you know, Google, Meta, Apple, uh, you know, uh, Naver, and Coupang. Uh, So-called Amazon of Korea, you know, Coupang is Amazon of Korea, right? It's actually uh, the U.S. company, you know, it is listed in the U.S. market, uh, would likely target it. So there are some complaints. Um, this proposed act and the bills under discussion, you know, it's limit that uh, unfairly target U.S. you know companies, which will in turn end up you know helping Chinese companies gain larger market share, like Alibaba and TikTok have recently you know uh, amplifying investment in Korea, and Alibaba, uh, Alibaba sub subsidiaries Alipay, AliExpress, and uh, Temu are rapidly gaining uh, market share in Korea. So. Um, the, the uh, platform law might be uh, amended a little, little bit, you know, to uh, you know, resolve this issue too. Right, which is why discussions are currently taking place to ensure a productive bill then. All right, Professor Kim, as always, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts today. And so thank you very much for your insight. Thank you, Sunny. Thanks for having me. Right. Well, on that note, we end this edition of Issues and Insiders. As always, thank you for watching. See you same time tomorrow.